Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, welcome back to OS World Cup 2024 quarterfinals weekend. It is time for the match that you have all been awaiting, the rematch of one of the biggest upsets in OS World Cup history. It is three seed United States. It is six seed Canada. It is two teams that are looking really great so far this year. USA yet to drop a point, Canada dropping just one. Some different rosters, some different types of picks, some different skill sets going to be presenting themselves as United States looks to avoid being upset once more. Canada looking to pull off the miraculous for the second year in a row. It is going to be a banger to close out this weekend, our last of the winner's bracket quarterfinals matches. I am this one guy joining me all the way from Ottawa, Canada, full bias caster himself. iFlame is going to be in the booth today. Back-to-back -back years, you get this one, iFlame. Last year, you casted that upset. This year, what are you thinking as Canada looks to repeat that performance? Man, that match was an absolute joy to cast. And let me tell you why they're going to do it again. Canada has been a very solid early game team, and they have been on form so far. First of all, Zudinator had an absurd performance last week. Um, first overall by a massive margin, one of the strongest performances we have seen in OWC history. I mean, in terms of individual maps, it was top score on the Hard Rock 2 and the Free Mod 2, second best score on the No Mod 4 and the Hidden 1, and fifth best score on the Hidden 2. Didn't find a single miss, a single break all of last week, but you got to give credit to the rest of the roster as well. Uh, some of the newcomers, Dark Karate and Pikapone, have both really been showing up. Of course, we all remember last year, Cut Paper popped off in quarterfinals, so the Cut Paper buff is going to come through big, and I think they're going to be strong on the head-ins. And of course, you have that returning core of Ryuke, Xylus, and uh, Nick, another OWC veteran. But how about this, this U.S. roster? USA roster, you know, year in and year out, it seems like they're able to draw upon this crazy player base that the USA has to offer. Switch players in, switch players out, do what looks best for these teams. You bring back five members of last year's team. You've got Takedo, Rectagon, Window Life, Bashi Man, and Kama all making their return from the 2023 squad. They led that team to victory. Notable absence, of course. Vaxe departing this year gets replaced by the returning Utami. Decaton coming back after your year's absence. And Pez making his debut. Now, this guy is the real deal. Pez has been showing up and showing out tournament in and tournament out this entire year. His first OWC now, and he's been a player to really watch out for. USA likes to bolster their strengths, right? Whatever it is that they think they need to do to win these late stage matches, the USA finds a way to put those players on their rosters. Pez comes in, offers a lot of mechanical skill, which is an area that Canada kind of downgraded a little bit this year, right? Without players like Curtis and Stoof. So you've got a little bit of that strength coming in for the United States, looking ahead to Canada, looking ahead to Australia, South Korea, and those late rounds. USA trying to put together a roster that can beat those late stage teams. And they've been able to do it five, six, seven years in a row, you know? It's a scary roster, but I'm curious to see. So we talk about a lot of things these teams are strong at. We talk about, you know, kind of what they've made better, what they've made worse. It's interesting this year because Canada's historically been this mechanics team, right? They've had such good speed rosters. Now it's feeling a little bit more like they're going a different direction. They want, I think, to go into some of the more awkward stuff, whereas the United States may be the mechanics favored team in this matchup. What are we thinking? If you had to predict for Canada, their picks, their bands, where are we looking here in this pool for the last time we'll be seeing this quarters pool? Well, bans for Canada should be nice and easy. As you mentioned, this time around, no Curtis, no Stoof. That Speed DT roster is a lot weaker this time around. Other areas are stronger. Uh, but against the US, who has been one of the strongest speed teams in this tournament, I think you just have to ban out the free mod 2, the DT3. You do unfortunately have to leave that no mod 2 open, but it's 220 BPM, much more manageable than the speed picks. Uh, in terms of actual picks, I think they're going to look for the hiddens, uh, of course. They're going to look for some of the aim focus picks, and like you said, some of the more awkward stuff. Uh, but hear me out, I think we could see a big black pick out of Canada. It doesn't seem like your traditional Canada pick, but 
You look at those leaderboards, Cut Paper has a hidden FC on the map, Tutinator has a one miss HDHR on the big black from uh, just a few days ago actually, so evidently they have been practicing it. And that's your mod requirements for fulfilled, they just need two more players on the Nomad. And so that might be something they look to pick. Over on the United States side, um, I have to imagine they're going to just look to ban out some of those hiddens. Uh, Hidden One has been frequently banned against Canada uh, this year and in previous years as well. One map that's really interesting to me is that Hard Rock 2. Canada top scoring the Hard Rock 2 last week, but the US have been monsters on the Hard Rock 2 as well. Both of these teams have picked Hard Rock 2 both in round of 32 and round of 16. So it's almost going to be a game of chicken. Both teams, I think, like the Hard Rock 2 generally, but which team is going to end up picking it? And do you skip picking the Hard Rock 2 and kind of assuming that your opponent will pick it for you? We'll have to see. Yeah, to me, I almost feel like that Hard Rock 2 is a little bit of a handshake here, right? United States, you're looking down that roster, you see names like Boshi Man so good on Precision, you see Rectigon so good on Precision, Decaten, a frequent Hard Rock player. Like, that's a scary Precision team for a CS8 map. Meanwhile, you know, Canada, you've got Zudi, you've got Ryuke, you've got, uh, what, Sari, Dark Karate. Like, both sides have such strong players on that map. It almost feels like a handshake. You just save it till the very end of the map, or of the match, excuse me, if it's gonna get picked at all. I, I, I almost see a world where USA could actually just double ban Hiddens. Everybody has completely passed up on selecting the Hidden One this week. It's been completely unpicked, I believe, to this point. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, that's maybe bannable for the United States. Don't wanna have to get into that awkward Hidden Aim against a team like Canada. I think the, the biggest thing for USA, right, you want to avoid what happened last year, which was Zudinator and Cut Paper getting going and really carrying that match against the USA. They don't want to let that happen again. So I think they maybe just target those picks. And like you said, you know, Canada, you probably just go straight into the DT3 free mod 2 bands. And then USA's picks get a little bit more interesting as well, because those would be the really obvious picks. Interestingly enough, USA did uh, ban the DT2 last week. But I think if given the opportunity to match like this, they'd pick straight into speed. So I think both teams, we might see some adjustments of strategy because they're going to be kind of having their focal points in these bands. And we're about to get in and we're going to find out it's going to be Canada to ban first. If they are going to go that direction, then there it is. First ban DT3, no second thoughts about it, no time taken, boom, done. And you mentioned that HD1, yes, it's had no picks, but it's also been banned four times, and Canada is not the team you want to leave that open against. Canada is a team that will absolutely pick the hidden one, no hesitation. Maybe they feel confident, but I think it absolutely should just be the double hidden ban. Um, there is the Nomad 5 as well, but I think the US have the roster, and they're going to ban out the big black. They have the same insight that I do, and they're not going to give Canada a chance to play it, unfortunately, for them. but. Leaving both the hiddens open, and you know, despite us mentioning a couple times that Canada loves to pick these hiddens, they have been really strong on them. It was the US that had the top score on the hidden two last week, so uh, it's certainly not free. There's the hidden one ban, very much as expected, but uh, now we're just going to get the other speed map banned out uh, by Canada, and then we can get into this match. And uh, TNG, we we're going to start to see the dismantling of the American roster for the second year in a row. <laughs> oh man, you would like that, wouldn't you? Uh, I certainly would. <laughs> you know, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this about this week. I have gone, so far this week, 15 correct picks on the Pick'ems with zero correct score lines. So whatever I say about the score of this match is just going to be wrong, so I'm not even going to try. It's just not even worth the trouble because I clearly don't know what I'm doing when I'm trying to decide on what scoreline matches are going to be likely to come out with. I think this match should be uh, realistically pretty hard fought. I don't see a world unless something really crazy happens where this goes one-sided. And it's going to be DT2 ban from Canada. So I actually hate this ban personally. I like it. I'm like a fan of it as a United States fan. I kind of hate this ban in, in the sense of like, why would you feel this map is necessary to ban? I don't know that there's any team that's going to be consistent enough on this DT2. I don't like to use the word RNG, but DT2 along with 3 mod 3 are the most two like coin flip RNG maps because that DT alt style four minutes long, like you can just miss anywhere. 
I don't really know that I understand that band, but clearly they know what they're doing, so I'm going to trust that uh, Xylus, after all these years of captaining, has a good reason for that one. And Canada, going to opt straight into the Hidden 3. Hidden tech for both these teams, I think, a really good skill set. You've got players like Taquito on the United States side. You've got Zudinator. You've got Cut Paper on Canada. They're looking to get their two top players from last year going again this time around. Yeah, I, I'll defend the uh, the DT2 ban a little bit. I'm not going to pretend I'm a huge fan of it either, uh, but I think the idea is that US had the top score on the alt DT last week, although it was DT3 that time around, and they were far and away the strongest team on that map. I mean, players like Kama, like Rectigon, dominate those kind of maps, and I guess they just didn't feel they had the roster for it for some reason. They feel they have a slightly better chance on the... Uh, DT, uh, sorry, the free mod 2 speed pick, but I think realistically they know those three maps are just guaranteed losses, and I guess the thought is, well, there's a slightly smaller chance we lose free mod 2 than the DT2, but let's talk about this hidden 3. This one is pretty heavy on the slider tech. You've got a couple, 200 first, but nothing too crazy. Some aim control, some flow. I think, I do expect to see a cut paper in as the last player for Canada. And for the US, they have quite a few players who could fill that last spot. Um, I think it is likely to be uh, Rectigon. Uh, is so good on the tech. Yeah, I think um, on a map like this where it's... <laughs> I hesitate to use this phrase because I know how some people feel about it. Um, but where it's kind of a mech tech map. Um, both these teams are going to feel pretty powerful. Um, you've got... Well, you've got the roster that's in right now. I'm actually a little surprised to see that... If this is the USA roster, I'm a little surprised. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily anticipated Bashi in on this. Takedo, Decayton, and Utami. I'm not entirely sure that this is what I expected for USA on this map. I kind of... I mean, Rektion not known as a hidden player, but you still expect him to be just about Permalobby. But here we go anyway. Silas, Junior, Pikapone, and indeed Cut Paper as the fourth for Canada. And uh, Iflame, away we go into this match. United States looking to right the wrongs of last year, not looking to lose this matchup again. Canada, though, thinking they maybe have the USA's number in this quarterfinal stage. A great early to mid-round team against one of the greatest late-stage teams that OWC has ever known. And it's hidden three to start things off. Exactly. We're one round later. I think the US would have a pretty big advantage in this match, but if you're going to face off against the U.S., the quarterfinals is where you want to do it. Let's see if Canada can start off strong with their own first pick as we start to get into the first chorus section. It's going to be Canada finding the first miss as Pikapone will drop. It traded right back from Bashi Man, and it's really going to even things out. Do expect to see quite a few more drops. This map is only gets harder as the map goes on and is incredibly difficult, but all six other players holding strong into the first break. Dada, a big fan of this map set, has used a couple other diffs of it in other tournaments and pretty good results. And there's a big double break from Canada. That's Xylus and Zudinator are both going down. Only Cut Paper left on the FC. Pikapone on the recovery combo. There goes Cut Paper as well. And now it is United States. Three FCs make that two FCs against zero. No combo at all for Canada. Halfway through this first pick, looking like it may be backfiring on them a bit. We'll see how long Takito and Utami can hold on to this double FC. Takito, of course, incredibly well known for hidden tech. Utami, basically good at anything you could possibly think of skill set wise. And those two are going to look to build this lead up for the United States. Canada's got a lot of work to do to try to bring this one back. Yeah, 200,000 points is really tough, especially into the end of this map. It's so difficult, really hard to find that recovery combo. And the recovery combo is there, but Takedo, Utami are just not missing. There goes Takedo, that's one down, but they still need the second, and they're quickly running out of time. Only a quarter of the map to go. That's a 300,000 score lead. It's going to take a lot, but they're not mathematically out of it yet. Utami needs to miss in the next five seconds, and it just doesn't happen. I think the United States are going to get an early break point, and things not starting off well for Canada. No, this is not a, at all what they could have ever wanted out of this. You needed to get at least an FC, if not a couple, if you're Canada first picking a map like this into the United States. I absolutely understand the strategy of it for Canada. You've got Zudi and Cut Paper who are so good at this. But United States saying, nah, guys, we've got Utami dropping the FC. We've got Decayton dropping the S rank. We've got Takedo dropping the 700k plus. 
and all of those players looking so strong. Bashi backing up with the score there as well. And Canada just didn't get what they needed to, you know, a 660K, a 659K from Zudi and Cut Paper. Just not needed. Austrian for their own first pick. United States sent them packing on that one. So maybe Canada can pull something off right back as United States looking for the early consolidated breakpoint. Yeah, I think part of what makes that matchup so interesting is, especially early on, each team should have their favorite picks, but it doesn't feel like there's anything that's free, right? Canada do have the players to put up good scores on this. And even though the United States are the expected favorites on this one, all it takes is one, two unlucky misses in the wrong part of the map, and all of a sudden Canada is storming right back into a breakpoint of their own. This is a long enough map that early misses shouldn't matter too much, but for once we aren't seeing any, and we're going to want to see some consistency as the map only gets harder uh, into the ending. Zudi is going to find the first miss, and Canada falling behind early yet again, both in combo and accuracy. Yeah, that Ak is uh, is noteworthy. Zudi down at 95% has never been known as a speed player. She's gotten better at it, but still not the best in the world. It's going to be a traded break there. Ryuke and Rektigon to fall to Kate and Kama Utami holding against Silas and Saryi. And, uh, you know, USA, their target is top one as there goes down Kama. And uh, I was going to say that uh, South Korea, who's, you know, some would say the biggest opposition in this overall tournament, put up a four mil on this. USA looking like they're not going to be able to match anything like that. Downfall Xylus, downfall Kama and Rectigon, and it is Decaden and Utami with the double FC. Sorry coming in for this and putting up the FC still for Canada. Zudi and Ryuke trying to recover that 120k deficit though is intact for the United States halfway through. Yep, and Canada in a similar spot to last match. They're relying on a miss from the US. There is one, but it's not the one they need. No, it was a Boncho miss. Rectigon is still holding on to the combo, and Canada do have the recoveries on Sudi and Ryuke. Xylus does find a miss, but less important. And there is a really tricky triangle pattern coming up uh, shortly. We'll see if that claims any combos. Ooh. Sorry, that's the FC gone for Canada. Traded back by Common, but that's not a trade you can afford. And the United States are going to run away with this map into the ending. Yeah, this one could get a little ugly here into the ending. Zudi, the best combo on the Canadian side. and. You know, nobody with an ACK over 98 for Canada. Meanwhile, United States, Decaden FC, Utami FC, both high 98s, nearly the 99. Kama, of course, dropping the 99.4 ACK, even though he's had a couple of breaks. Rectigon doing a great performance as well. And this is just the United States pretty much outclassing Canada on this pick across the board. There's a late drop from Zudinator as well. And this is 
a much better first pick for the United States than Canada's was for them. It's a double full combo. It's Decayton and Utami, a 3.6 mil win for the United States, a 3.6 mil score, excuse me, a 1 million score win, a four-way S rank, not going to be quite the best score of the week on that map. Those honors will uh, go to South Korea and Germany above them. But United States making a statement here with that point. Yeah, they certainly aren't far behind. Uh, three S ranks is absolutely absurd. And this was the expected result uh, for this one. So Canada aren't going to feel too bad, but down to zero can be a little tough. They got to keep their heads in the game, get back to their picks and Gotta give a shout out to Sari has had improved massively from 2022 and here's the hidden two pick. This one's a little scary, should favor Canada on paper, but last week, as I mentioned earlier, it was the US who had the top score on that hidden two and they have the players for it. They have Takito, Utami, uh, Bashi, and we'll see who the last player is. Could be Decaden. And I will say last week's Hidden 2, of course, a very different style of map yep. than uh, than this week. So it's really not a great direct comparison. Last week's Hidden 2 wasn't even uh, wasn't even low AR, right? That was an yeah. AR 9 point something, if I'm right, sir. Um, so you really can't compare that map to this one. Um, I don't know that we have a great comparison for these teams on this map, realistically. Um, an aim-focused low AR hidden pick that is... Uh, Something that both teams, like you said, something both teams will have players for, but something we haven't really seen them play. Um, I mean, you have to go to, like, qualifiers, maybe? Where USA did have the better top score on the Hidden 2. Um, but since then, it's not really been a skill set we've seen that much out of these guys. So, this one is kind of a new pick. Yeah, and, you know, obviously, for Canada, when you think of, of Hidden, you think of Zudinator and Cup Paper, but I want to keep an eye on Pika Poem for this one. Last week, uh, again, Hidden 2 was not AR8, but has looked really good on the Hidden All Tournament Long, had the 8th best score, and has looked good on some of those lower AR. Utam, Utami, but yeah, okay, okay, there we are. Interestingly, uh, it's Decaton in for the United States. I kind of thought this might be Rectagon. I feel like it's all, I, oh, I guess I always feel like it's going to be Rectagon. So it's <laughs> like, if he's not in for stuff, it's almost surprising. You always expect Bashi Man, Takito, and Utami, um, but Decaton in for the uh, slightly lower AR hidden pick is uh, going to be the round out player on the roster here for this one. Yeah, this is the reading roster they've been running with most of the uh, tournament, but into the hidden two, Canada cannot afford to give up another break point. They need to fight back now. And this one is not an easy map to do it on. Very awkward rhythms, very tough on the uh, flow aim reading. And uh, pretty different from some of the earlier rounds, kind of low AR um, aim reading maps that you tend to see more often. And so we'll see what Canada can do here. Not off to a great start as they find two misses. Utami does trade one back, but it's early enough. It shouldn't be a big factor as long as they can recover. The map is short though, only two minutes long. And the combos are getting big enough though now that the next miss will count. Yeah, it was three early drops from Canada. Zudinator, Picapone, and Xylus right at the very start. I mean, he I, he like just didn't kind of play the first few combos. He was down at you know very low accuracy. Uh, for a moment there, but has recovered just fine. And yeah, this is all eight players at the moment having recovered just some serious amounts of combo for a map that's this short. I mean, it's only 300, 400, but like you said, two minute long map. 100K in favor of the United States, but that can go in a hurry if anybody finds a break on any of these tricky little overlapping patterns. It's gonna be Takito Bashi, man, to fall from the United States, and Canada is gonna jump right on that opportunity. Still holding all their combos. And now United States gonna rely on Decayton Utami holding, but Canada four big combos on their side, and that lead is going their way as Decayton falls as well. Yeah, now it's just Utami trying to fend off the Canadians, and man, after that early disaster, they have recovered incredibly well. Sudi, Pikapom back up to those 600 combos, and Cup, Paper, Silas still going strong. 300,000 points in the lead now in Canada. Gonna get a point back, gonna get some momentum in their favor, and we have a match on our hands. 
This was indeed, this is exactly what Canada wanted and what they needed, and they're gonna get it here. This is going to be a very solid team score. A mat that we have not really seen played all that much. I think um, this has only been picked like three times so far this yeah. week, and this is going to be the best team score on it by over a million points. A 3.6 mil for Canada. I mean, just look at that. That is some quality stuff. Cut paper getting going here. Zudi and Peekapone, just the early breaks. Likewise with Silas. It's all just reverse chokes, basically, for those players. And I said before the match, when we were discussing, like, USA, there's a world where they just banned Hidden 1 and Hidden 2. And this is exactly why, because that was a very one-sided pick. And as you said, gets Canada going and gets us into a little more competitive of a match than those first two picks. Yeah. Canada have been incredibly strong on the rating. U.S. have the next pick, though, and they still have quite a few options. They've got the free mod speed map in free mod 2. Great core speed. They are very dense burst, but at 246, they're still tricky for, I think, quite a few players on the Canadian roster. I think the other map you're looking at is DT1, and Canada do have quite a solid DT1 roster, but I think the United States are going to be confident enough to pick it anyways. I do feel like you take the free mod too first. I'm not sure I see any reason not to, uh, especially after the previous speed map where they won in very dominant fashion. Yeah, I think this pretty much has to be free mod too in my eyes. I think DT1 and, and Nomad 1 are both a little bit scary for the United States in this matchup. Um, it's actually, though, it's going to be Hard Rock 1. That's a little bit out of left field to me. We discussed aim as a skill set. Uh, you know, it's something that Canada is always good at. Really traditionally strong Hard Rock aim team, especially you look at somebody like Zunator who you drop her into a Hard Rock aim and she just FCs 100% of the time. The United States usually doesn't spec super heavily into aim. Their rosters traditionally are good at aim incidentally at most rather than it being a primary focal point. So seeing them picking into a hard rock aim map kind of early on in this match is a little interesting to me. But with Rectagon on that side, with Pez having been added, you do bolster that strength again kind of incidentally this year to where it's a pickable skill set for you. Yeah, likely going to see Kama come in as well. Pez has been performing really well in the Hard Rock so far, and I mean, on one hand, Rectagon is of course probably the best Hard Rock game player in the game, but this is not one of those super late stage pools where Rectagon can solo carry the pick. You need to have a really strong team performance, and while I have no doubt United States will put up a solid team score, Canada, good aim team, they have Hard Rock players, Ryu K has been popping off on some of the Hard Rocks already in this tournament, uh, fourth place on the Hard Rock last week took the uh, Hard Rock on the free mod 2 as well, so I think players to watch, of course, uh, Rectigon Pez for the US and for Canada, Ryuke and probably Nick, who's uh, a really solid in player for them. Yeah, Nick making his return to the Canadian team has traditionally been a pretty solid mechanics player, good on this sort of stamina flow stream stuff, good on the aim as well, so we'll see how he performs um, into this match now for the first time. One thing that I will note um, that I like that USA is doing, they're forcing Cut Paper out of the match. You did, of course, just top score that hidden two. Pick something that Cut Paper is not in for it is a strategy that I think makes a lot of sense here for the USA. He was their downfall last year. He's somebody that's good at skill sets that they're decent to good at at best. And when you've got a roster of Erectigon, Pez, Utami, and Decaton on Hard Rock Aim, you're probably feeling pretty confident looking to continue to defend the breakpoint advantage. You probably are. And uh, yeah, it seems like the U.S. have learned their lesson. They're going to get cup paper out of the lobby nice and early, and they really want to hold on to their lead. And they know they're going to have more picks. They don't need to pick the free month three right away, or the free month two right away. They're going to have that in their back pocket for later. And they're going to go to the hard rock one first. This map is very fast in terms of aim, but it's pretty straightforward. There's a streamier section in the middle, but otherwise, relatively comfortable patterns. And uh, we've seen some very good team scores on this map, 4 million from SK. So uh, you're going to expect to see a lot of high combos on a map like this. And it's likely going to come down to just a couple misses in the middle of the map. Hope to see those avoided, but <laughs> it's the worst place to miss. 
could be disaster. For now, though, both teams holding strong, not going to be much advantage either way. And the map doesn't really pick up all that much until about a quarter of the way into the map where we get into the more difficult guys section. Here we go. This is where we might start to see some misses, but both teams showing impressive consistency so far. At yeah, 234 BPM, Hard Rock aim at seven stars. I mean, this is just child's play for most of these players these days. The skill cap of everyone in this lobby is so high and no breaks at all through the one third mark. Just about 600 combo here for everyone. Um, it's just a small lead for United States, about 20k. That's going to be accuracy. A couple of little tapping portions can come in, can trip you up a little on some of those triples. The buzz sliders, a little slow, or kick sliders, excuse me, a little slow slider action as well. Nobody falling at all. This is such a scary pick for this reason. The consistency is so high on both of these teams. And we are yet to see a single break up to nearly 9. There's a couple of the stream stacks coming in. It's the Kane to fall. It's Rectigon to fall next. Ryuk as well. But it's three FCs to two in Canada's favor. As Xylus, Zudinator, and Nick all make it through. Pez and Utami have to hold on now that we're halfway through the map. And this is an incredibly consistent map. The second half of this map is not any harder than the first. We've seen these Canadian players hit this section once. The question is, can they do it again? They have the lead, and the lead is rapidly growing. But the United States are well poised to take advantage of any misses with those big combos on Pez and Utani. With the part of the map to go, Canada just needs to hold on for a little bit longer to get this break point back. Last chorus coming up. It's all on Xylus, Zui, and Nick here to hold on. Ryuke needs to keep the recovery as well. It could be a factor if one of those FCs drops off. But those FCs don't look like they're dropping off anytime too soon. And is the United States second pick going to be a blunder for them? It's looking more and more like that's going to be the case. 160k and growing the lead for Canada. And it is a triple FC coming into the very end of the map. It would have to be a break right now, pretty much. And it's just not going to happen. The Hard Rock aim consistency for this Canadian roster is too strong. It is Xylus, it is Zudinator, and it is Nick1324 bringing the triple FC into the ending. It's a late break from Nick, but it should be late enough not to matter. And indeed, 230k, the break point goes back to Canada. They tie things up at two apiece. And man, it's just the smallest of margins. One miss for Rectigon, one slider break for Decaton, and that's all that made the difference in the map, and Canada ties it up. Like you said, after they won that hidden two, we've got a match on our hands, and now we have an even closer one. And on one hand, you could say that's a miss pick, but against 90% of teams, in fact, against all of them, except for three, you would win really decisively with a 3.4 million team score. Uh, but Canada puts up 3.6 million, and I'm willing to bet that's the highest combined team score we've seen by a massive margin uh, in any match so far. Canada with the second best score, and now it's a tie game. It's nice to get that break point back early. Hard Rock not paying off for the US, and I think that's gonna make potentially the US slightly more hesitant to pick Hard Rock too, although I think the option will be open for them later. Canada still have good choices left. They have the anti-mod free mod that they have looked so good on. Um, they love to overmod the free mods. Zudi and Cut Paper both incredibly comfortable on the hard rock. Then they have the reading in the no mod 5. And no mod 5 it is. This is CS5 AR5. Um, so it's going super far into the reading. And this is kind of your aim reading pick. Uh, so very different style from the hidden 2. Um, there's some aim control mixed in, but there are some tricky square patterns to watch out for and a very tough ending as well. So we're going to want to watch out for tough combo breaks. I expect uh, both rosters to be fairly similar uh, to the Hidden 2 roster. Um, Rectigon in the lobby right now. I have to imagine Rectigon will be subbing out for uh, Decaton, who's played most of the rating maps for the US so far in this tournament. but. Uh, Rectigon can play just about anything, so you never know. Yeah, Rectigon to me has come up, has really improved as a uh, low AR, especially Nomad, uh, low AR Nomad breeding player. So we'll see if he maybe ends up staying in for this. You got to figure Bashi Man, Utami, uh, maybe Takedo. Canada, get into another breeding pick. You get uh, Zudi in for it, you get Cut Paper back in for it. 
and you've got a roster much like the one that won you your previous pick on that hit two, as you said, and you're going to be back into a pretty good spot here looking to take a lead in this match for the first time. This map has felt very volatile, I will say. Um, we've seen a couple matches so far today where a team ran out to a big lead, two, three, four hundred thousand points, and then ended up fumbling it. You know, that happened uh, to, it was Norway against China. I believe also may have happened in Ukraine versus Philippines, where a team was able to make a big comeback in this map. So, have to see what the consistency looks like. As you mentioned, the latter kind of portion of this pick gets very, very difficult. There you go. So, uh, from what you've said, uh, our takeaway from previous matches is that whichever team gets the early lead is uh, probably going to lose. Uh, I have to say, though, before we start this, map. Surprising rosters from both teams. Uh, Window Life, I think, not usually in for the breeding, and same is true for Nick with Canada. So, curious to see how those players perform, but this one should be a good pick for Canada that hasn't necessarily paid off uh, in previous maps, so we'll see if they can close it out here. Another short map, 2 minutes and 15 seconds. This one doesn't look that hard, but there are so many places to miss on. Accuracy could be a big deal. It's very, very easy to drop a lot of accuracy on this one, just slightly uh, timing the notes uh, incorrectly, especially with some of these bursts. And uh, the ending is going to be a real test. And what that means is the early lead is going to be key. You can't afford to drop uh, early misses and give up that score lead. And we see one of those early misses coming out from Utami. Thankfully, it's early enough that it shouldn't be a huge deal. Uh, but you see accuracy is fairly low across the board. Uh, 93s uh, for Canada on Zudi and Dark Karate are going to be balanced out by the 99 from Cup Paper and Nick. Dark Karate finds the first big miss, going to be down by about 300 combo. And Utami has recovered nicely, so that score lead is going to flip back over to the US as Dark Karate continues to struggle in Canada, playing with three big combos. The square doesn't claim anyone. There's still this linear section that has tripped up a few players, but nobody missing on it. You can see that Dark Karate really not having the best time all the way down at 90 and 91% act. So that's a that's a player to kind of look out for to see because the back half of this map gets so challenging. We'll see if he can pick it up or if he'll continue to struggle. USA building up three big FC combos like Canada is, but that Utami backing score over 100,000 points ahead of Dark Karate on his own, and that's most of the margin of that lead for the US on this pick so far. But this map only gets more difficult in the last third to quarter, so do not count your chickens before they hatch here for either team. But noting Zudi, 91 act with that Dark Karate, 91 act as well. 92 on Window Life, not known as a reading player, but in for this and holding the combo. If any of those lot players break, this gets terrifying into the ending. And here we go. It's just going to ramp up into the end. It's a 200k lead for the United States. There goes Zudinator. It's traded by Window Life. Dark Karate as well. Rectigon the next to fall. And you have Cut Paper with the FC. Nick with the FC. Bashi with the FC for the United States. The lone holdout. Utami with the backing combo. And with a 200k lead, there goes Nick. And that is most likely going to settle this one. United States looking like they're going to manage another break point here. Despite dropping that hidden two... They are going to take the Nomad 5, and as much as it feels like those maps often go hand in hand, it's not going to be the case here. United States, we're going to go with another break point. That's three already in this match. The lead back their way, just under 400,000 points. The margin on that one, very well played. Bashi Man's skill set, and he comes in and clutches up time and time again on these kinds of maps. He certainly does, and I think Canada felt that their three reading players were strong enough to put up a good enough score, uh, but that's not something you can afford to do against the team like the United States. You really need four players who are comfortable on the map because the United States have four players that are comfortable on any skill set you could possibly imagine. Uh, even AR5 apparently is. Um, Bashi had a nice FC, but even then I don't think they had a score below 500k. I and think lowest score. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, based off of what we've seen recently, uh, the United States should just pick the pick the anti mod because uh, you know it's uh, they're gonna go back to speed. Nope. This is this is the right <laughs> pick. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh. You know, it, it's funny to think about them picking the free mod four after the way that Nomad <laughs> five went, but uh, I think the free mod two makes a little bit more sense on paper. Um, you really anticipate this team to be very, very good at a speedy burst speed map like this one is. Um, it's been a pretty popular pick so far this week, and, uh, you know, going into this match, I think we always just expected USA to pick this one eventually, and so here we are. Um, last and week, I'm both these... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I have no bias, and clearly, uh, there's no ill intent with the uh, the free mod 2 suggestion. I think it would be a great pick for the USA, if they're, uh, if they're listening. So, one interesting thing I noted... Last week, both these teams did play the free mod 3, and of course in the slightly smaller pool, that was the speed pick last week. Neither of them really did particularly well on it in the grand scheme of things. The United States dropped a 3.2 mil, but like on a round of 16 speed map, that's nothing impressive. Canada dropped a sub 3 million score. They were the 13th and 18th best performances on the week overall. Yeah. So, speed just didn't look super great for either of them a week ago. You gotta figure they've shored that up in the uh, intermediary ten uh, seven days since then. Yeah, you have to think that of an off week for both teams, and you certainly can't count Canada out of this one, right? They have really good uh, speed players in Ryuke and Stylus, who's currently not in the lobby, which is slightly concerning. Um, so, you know, if you do see unlucky misses from the U.S., I think they should have at least one or two high combos to bring it back, but uh, the U.S. is not a team you expect to find many misses on a map like this. I mean, Rektigon, Dikido, Window Life, and Utami, uh, I can't think of a, another four that you'd want on a map like this. Uh, curious to see what the uh, mods are. I think we're likely to see, well, of course, Studionator is going to be on the hidden, but um, I... Honestly, I'm tempted to say they probably shouldn't put Ryuke on the Hard Rock uh, for Canada. Let him take the Nomad, get the biggest combo. And of course, Rectigon's going to take the Hard Rock. There are no questions there with Takedo on the Hidden. That is what they're known for, and uh, they're not going to have any of a tougher time for it. Yeah, USA, a couple of the absolute best tournament speed players in the world with Rectigon and Window Life. Um, a little bit of a question for me is going to be Utami. The the one skill set that it felt like he wasn't maybe all the way back on when he returned from his uh, absence from tournament play was speed. So we'll see how he looks here on a speedy pick um, after you know doing pretty well uh, on on previous picks he's been in for. You got to figure he's about all the way back. But this one a little more raw speed than anything we've seen. It was an early break there from Nick One Three Two Four. Generally speaking, you don't want to see that no mod player break in the very beginning, but. Literally 50 combo into the map, not going to be the end of the world. And all eight, uh, or all seven other, excuse me, full combos holding strong for the time being. But that consistency gets called into play a little bit when it's almost three minutes of this. And somehow, there are still three SSs. Make that two, but this is not the kind of map you generally expect to see that on. They are on the no mods, but the combos are big now. The next miss is going to be massive, and... We've got the next chorus section coming up. I'd say this map is gets slightly more difficult as the map goes on. It's not a massive spike, but it is a tricky section. Eyes on Nick, want to see good recovery. Eyes on the modded players as well. Zudinator on the hidden hard rock, certainly a risk, but one that Canada takes frequently. And these teams, UNG, they're just not missing. What are we watching? We are watching two of the best in the tournament doing what they do incredibly well. Week in and week out. And man, you gotta give so much credit to the Zudinator speed glow up. There was a time when she could never have been on a map in on a map like this, and now she's cruising on that HDHR FC. And it is possibly gonna be important. No, of course, right as we say that it's Zudi and Pika Pone to fall. That's the two modded players down for Canada. Meanwhile, United States, the four-way still intact at the two-thirds mark. Everyone with high accuracy, 99.27 on hard rock, the lowest act for the United States through 1150 combo and they're going to cruise out to about a 300,000 point lead with a quarter of the way to go down goes Zudinator again the chances for Canada getting ever more slim as Ryuke is the only FC holding backed up by Nick on some recovery combo since that early miss yeah this is exactly what we're expecting Canada has strong players they have big combos ready to capitalize if the U.S. misses but the U.S. 
are not a team that misses on this map. They're still holding the four-way. The accuracies are all above 99.5. Rectigon slightly below after that miss, but we very well could see a four-way on this map. The ending is tricky, but they've looked so comfortable so far. Comfortable indeed. It's still a four-way. It's still four players at 99.4 ack or better. The United States crushes. Free mod 2. That is a four way full combo, the first on this map of the week. The previous best score on this map was Australia at 3.7 million. USA just dropped 4.1. This is why we said they should pick speed in this matchup because that is probably the best team score you're going to see on anything all week. Uh, easily. And I mean, this is the matchup of quarterfinals Titans right here. Canada, 3.1 or 3.3 million, I think they had, was the Third best score on the map, only behind the US and Australia, who put up 3.7 million. Time and time again, we're seeing one team put up, you know, top team scores across the tournament, and the other team is second, third best score right behind them. I mean, I think these two teams would have beaten most other teams this week, probably with the exceptions of uh, South Korea and Australia, but. The U.S. up by two. They're in a really good spot. They have another pick. They still have a couple of good maps, although they don't really have speed left. There's no mud to tapping as an option. Uh, but Canada needs a breakpoint back at some point. Before the breakpoint, they get a pick of their own. And they're going to opt into the free mod. Mud makes a lot of sense. Canada has looked really good on the free mods. This is going to be just kind of your consistency aim. Uh, there's a little bit of flow at the start, but it's like... Uh, I don't know, snap aim, flow aim. Uh, CS 3.3 makes it a little bit easier on HR, but it is still scary. And I'm curious if we are going to see the overmod from Canada. If we were, I think it'd be Sudi on the Hidden Hard Rock, Cup Paper on the Hidden, and then uh, potentially we see Rike taking Hard Rock. But I, I really do not want to see an overmod on this one as much as Canada loves to do it. It is not the time. No, this is a terrifying map to overmod. Uh, it's, you know, it's the smaller or the bigger circles, the lower circle size, it is the higher AR. So like, it's maybe a little tempting to toss in an extra hard rock player because it's CS 3.3 base, but the patterning in this is so challenging. It's like, it's harder to aim with hard rock. It's reasonably dense with hidden. It's just a challenge and I like I actually like this pick a lot for Canada. I think this is the type of thing with what's remaining in the pool that looks pretty good for them. But it's also such a scary pick. Um, just in general, looking at you know the scores we've seen on this map so far, Norway dropped just shy of a 3 million team score, leading the way overall so far. It's only been played like three times. You've got a 2.9 mil, a couple 2.4 mils. So people dropping decent but not great scores. Very curious what's going to play out in this match because it feels like a map like this can really go any way. Yeah, and based on what we've seen so far, I think we could very easily see uh, the top two scores on this map uh, all weekend. And uh, what's nice for the, the United States on the free mods is that they have Takedo and Rectigon. Rectigon can play Hard Rock on absolutely anything. Takedo can play Hidden on absolutely everything. So. Uh, any given free mod, you know exactly what your mod lineup is going to be. And I will say for the United States, they have other players that can play those mods. Utami also incredibly good on the hidden. Uh, so they have options as well. If they, they feel like they want Takedo to, to play the no mod and have a better chance of full comboing, they can do that as well. Um, but Canada, uh, my question is, do we see a hard rock on Ryuk? Really want to see Ryuk on the no mod, in which case Zudi is going to have hidden hard rock cut paper on the hidden. And it looks like both teams <laughs> running back the mod combinations from that previous free mod. Uh, we'll see if this free mod goes a little better for Canada. I would say this is easily one of the harder maps in the pool. There are so many places to break. Uh, the jumps are so incredibly quick. The aim control requirement is absolutely brutal. And so there's going to be a lot of pressure on the Nomad players to perform. And oh, it is an extra hard rock on Ryu K. And mm. that is a risk, 2NG, that I'm going to be honest, I did not want to see. That is how Canada lost their one point to Poland in their previous match. But uh, we'll see if it pays off for them here. I You're making say, me a little nervous. And I will say this about that. Ryu K is a player who in solo loves just slapping hard rock and stuff and going for cool HR scores. 
So if there's anybody I'm going to trust with that kind of overmod, it's going to be him. It is going to be the early break from Xylus, and early is relative in this map. We're already a third of the way through, and now it starts to really kick off as these patterns start to come in. The aim and flow go kind of back and forth throughout this pick. You've got some aim, you've got some flow patterns. You've got some anti-aim patterns. It's going to be Taquito to fall on the hidden, the first break for the United States. So three FCs to three. Mod advantage to Canada will equate to a small score lead, but... You just gotta wait and see, because this map really gets going in the back half. And there goes Ryu K on the hard rock. That mod not paying off, but Decayton trades one back. It is a no mod down. It is nice to see the no mods dropping. Those are the players that you really want to hold. And now it's two FCs to two, but it's Canada that has the supporting combo on Xylus. They're gonna continue to push this score lead. And the pick is looking good for them. The ending of this map is incredibly tricky though. And Zudinator on hidden hard rock. It's not easy to hold. If we see one miss from Canada, it's going to go over an instant. There it is on cut paper. The United States have the combo to make the comeback, but do they have the time? It's going to be incredibly close. And I think unless we see a miss from Zudinator in the end, Canada should secure at the ending. Xylus finds one. The score, it's going back over so quickly. Zudinator drops and the United States takes it at the last second. That is devastating for Canada. The, ch the chain miss from Xylus. He fell apart in those last moments, and with Cut Paper breaking a hundred combo previously, while Utami and Rektigon held on, the United States just snatched that point away, grasping victory from the claws of defeat on the free mod one pick. Man, it looked for all the world like Canada was gonna have that one but they needed a second FC or at least just a slightly higher second score and it did not materialize for them. And that gives the United States a five to two lead. It is match points USA the rest of the way through. And here is the pick that we talked about. We said if it was going to happen, it was going to be late in this match. And I flame, we are now late in this match. It is the end game now. Match points for the United States, three of them in fact, before a potential tiebreaker. And they are going to say break glass in case of emergency and go into the small circle precision hard rock pick that we said could really go either way between these teams. Yeah, and I actually don't know that I'm the biggest fan of this pick, not because I think that the United States aren't going to be really good at it, but I think given the pick is so contested, Canada are the ones on the back foot, right? They're going to ones they're the ones who are going to feel pressure to go for risky picks. And I think there's a chance you could have waited a little bit longer to see if Canada would pick the Hard Rock 2 away from you. But the United States, they're not worried. They have confidence in themselves and they just want to close this one out. That was a crucial point for Canada. Had it been a 4-3 match, all of a sudden, they are right back in this one. But with two break points required, one of them has to be the Hard Rock 2. Then they need to win a pick of their own and another United States break point. Things are looking dire, but don't count them out of it yet. There's there's still hope. Yeah, you, you can't ever count a team like Canada out. They will keep their mental high. They will keep the confidence up as high as they possibly can in the hopes of making this comeback happen. And on a pick like this that really does feel like it could go either way, the momentum can swing rapidly. We've seen some decent combos we've seen some players struggle on this over the course of the weekend so far but man oh man you've got some unbelievably impeccable precision players in the lobby for this one Bashi of course why yeah. he's on the team that reading stuff and the precision one of the few players in the world who really specializes in this sort of thing you've got Rexigon who comes through time and time again on precision hard rock to Kate new Tommy no slouches either other side it's Zudi. You know what she's capable of on just about anything, precision included. Ryuke, Nick, and Dark Karate rounding out that roster for Canada. And in we're gonna go. The United States, their first match point of this matchup. Canada's got to take this, win their own pick, and get another break point just to force a tiebreaker. It feels like an uphill battle for them, but like we said, who knows? You gotta play the maps. And this is going to be the first match point that we're going to see here. And this is not your standard CS 6.5 Hard Rock 2. These are some absolutely minuscule circles at CS 7.8. Not something that's fun to deal with with the nerves. The actual patterns would be incredibly easy if the circles weren't so tiny, but 
with nerves, with, with the hard rock, it's so easy to miss. And most of these players are absolute veterans. I want to keep an eye on Dark Karate, the one rookie in the lobby, see if those nerves play a part. But looking good so far, it has been two misses from the US, one miss from Canada. All very early though. UK finds yet another miss, not looking super comfortable on this map, thankfully for Canada. The other three players are looking com significantly more comfortable. Accuracy is really good for both teams though. Impressive start already. It's a little surprising to see for the United States, two of their mainstay players on this skill set being the early ones to break, but the K New Tommy continuing to hold. And yeah, uh, you've got Ryuke having a little bit of trouble. Dark Karate struggling a bit with the accuracy, but holding the combo is very important. Yet another break from Ryuke, but there goes Utami. And United States now down to just the lone full combo on Decaten. And there it goes as well. Dark Karate trades it, but you've got Zudi and Nick against the recovery combos of Rektigon and Bashi. Coming into the last third of this map, Nick falls. And that could be critical. That could be huge. If Rektigon and Bashi can continue to hold, there goes Dark Karate again. Nick falls again. Ryuke trying to stabilize Zudi. Holding down the fort with EFC, but the United States can take the lead back. There goes Bashi. Oh, this is going to be ever so close coming into the ending as Ryuke falls again. Nick falls again. Utami goes down. It is Rektigon. It is Decaten trying to do everything. And down goes Zudinator. The FC falls. Canada's last hope is down. And with a full reset, Rektigon, who else? The United States' longtime mainstay. Late breaks come in, but there is just no combo anywhere. And that looks like it's going to be the map. That looks like it's going to be the match. And indeed it is. By 105k, United States exorcises their demons. They are not going to fall to Canada two years in a row in the same fashion. And they blow their doors off many a map in this one. 6-2 to two, the final score. Onward to the semifinals for the USA and a date with Australia. Yeah. Fending off their friends to the north, although that date with Australia, not going to be a fun one. That is going to be an incredibly exciting match. And uh, yet again, T1G, on that Hard Rock 2, US had the second best score of the weekend. Canada had the fourth best score of the weekend. This, despite it being 6-2, this truly was a match to behold. And I think uh, Canada can't be too ashamed.